The Point. Your number one choice for news and entertainment in the 419. Hosted by Raquel Flanagan. Real news, real issues for the real you. With interaction from Facebook and Twitter. Plus, the 419 Entertainment Spotlight. Welcome to The Point in Full HD. Welcome to The Point. I'm Raquel Flanagan and we're recording live. So log on now to your Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter and let us know what's on your mind. Next up, we have Julius Brown with his report commentary. Following that, we have an interview from DeAndre Ware. But first, sex workers state that Detroit pastor charged in Detroit slang was a customer. She was loved. She has aunts, her grandmother. She has a lot of people who love her. She, she was loved. And, 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 you know, people cared. So, you know, it, it, she just wasn't nobody. The mother of Kelly Stowe is devastated, trying to come to grips with her murder. And investigators say the person who killed the transgender woman is 46-year-old Albert Weathers, a local pastor. If you don't hear me preaching no more. Pastor Weathers is now charged with open murder and the use of a firearm and the commission of a felony. At his home in Sterling Heights, a woman who answered the door would only say they have no comment. Kelly Stowe was shot to death in the area of East McNichols in Brush in Detroit. And a source close to the investigation says there was a witness and that Albert Weathers only called police an hour after the shooting and after he clocked into work at the Great Lakes Water Authority. Questions that are expected to be answered at the preliminary examination include the motive for allegedly murdering Kelly, who aspired to be a fashion designer and buyer. Alba Weathers, 46, of Sterling Heights, is accused of murdering 36-year-old Kelly Stowe, a transgender woman whose body was found in December. A self-admitted sex worker testified that Alba Weathers, a Sterling Heights pastor, routinely sought out dates with transgenders in the Six Mile and Woodward area. Weathers has been charged with open murder. His bond is set at one million. Paul Manafort, who served as President Trump's campaign chairman, was sentenced to nearly four years in prison Thursday for cheating on his taxes and bank fraud, a far lesser sentence than the roughly 20 years he had faced under federal sentencing guidelines. Manafort has already spent nine months in jail, meaning the sentence imposed Thursday could end in less than three years, with an additional reduction for good behavior. Manafort still faces sentencing for related conspiracy charges in a D.C. federal court a case in which he could receive an additional 10 year prison term. Legendary performer Diana Ross has been added to the Prometica Summer Concert Series. The Motown legend, who's also been nominated for an Oscar for her acting roles, will play Promenade Park July 12th. Tickets go on sale March 14th at 10 a.m. $25 pre-sale, $30 day of show, and $45 for VIP. Gates open at 5 p.m. with the first act taking the stage at 6.15 p.m. The 2019 Prometica Summer Concert Series will also feature Brent Michaels and Shaka Khan. For the first time since 2014, Tartar's rates will be going up. Tartar says property taxes have gone down 30% over the last 10 years, or $5 million. It is primarily funded by that. Tartar passengers are now going to have to fork out another quarter if they are going to take the transportation service across Toledo. Its board announced Thursday that the fare will go from $1.25 to $1.50 beginning April 1st. This is part of an effort to improve on what would have been a more than $3 million budget deficit. Tartar General Manager Jim G says the board has pushed off raising fares for as long as it could. He hopes riders understand that it is necessary, it is a necessity to keep the business afloat in the future. When you're the lowest fare in the state and you delay as long as you can to raise the fares, passengers recognize that. While we did have some pushback, on the other hand, we had some other passengers who frankly said they understand. Earlier this year, Tartar announced Sunday services would be cut for the first time in 30 years. This, along with other service cuts, has Tartar more than $2 million. While the board did say they would bring back tarps, which is a pair of transit transport for Sunday work, Commissioner Pete Gerken thinks it will not have a positive reaction in the community. The fare increases are projected to increase Tartar's annual revenue by around a quarter of a million dollars. Coming up next, we have Julius Brown. Coming up later, we have Toledo's own boxing extraordinaire, DeAndre Ware. You've been tuned into The Point, and we'll be right back. Up 
Welcome back to The Point. Coming up now we have Julius Brown with his report commentary. Julius, what do you have for us today? Making headlines, first cousins in love with each other petition to legally get married in Utah. Two cousins who say they are in love with each other have created an online petition calling for the state of Utah to allow them to get legally married. The couple's goal is to get 1,000 signatures. 75 has already signed on. So I hear that Harvey Weinstein is back in the headlines. Can you tell us what's going on with that? Harvey Weinstein is back in the headlines being indicted on three additional sex assault charges. The charges come on top of his previous indictment for two counts of rape and one first degree criminal sex act charge related to alleged incidents with uh, women in 2013 and another woman in 2004. Since then, there have been 40 women to come forward. And one thing that I'm really excited about is we have a lot of young African-American entrepreneurs. Can you give us some more insight? Well, Raquel, at only 26 years old, Freddie Figures is the CEO of a $2.2 million Florida telecommunications company. We're the only minority-owned telecommunications company in the U.S. One thing that makes us very unique is we manufacture our own handsets. The Figure 7 2 has a built-in wireless blood glucose meter. As soon as you check your blood sugar, it sends that results instantly to your phone. It shares it with your closest relative, shares it with your provider, which is your doctor, and your insurance carrier. It also has a built-in mechanism that prevents texting and driving. Believe in what you do. Don't let anyone talk down to you. People will not see your vision. People would not believe in you, but just believe in yourself and keep thriving. As a young black man, Figures has always had a passion for technology. On top of the three Figures 4G LTE, Figures has designed banking security applications, a monitoring system for senior citizens, and countless other software programs for an array of clients. And according to a 2014 study by Insight Research Corp Telecommunications Services, revenue worldwide will grow from $2.1 trillion in 2014 to $2.4 trillion in 2019. And for the car enthusiast, Bugatti's latest creation, the La Voiture Noir, sold for a whopping $19 million. One of their most expensive cars ever. And for all my book readers, 419 The Point's own Raquel Flanagan has a book release April 28th at 5 p.m. at the Maumee Indoor Theater. That's all for me, Raquel. Back to you. Thank you, Julius. Yes, please come out April 28th at the Maumee Theater. I will have the release of my book, Unspoken, also featuring my short film based off the book entitled Matrimony. And that will be April 28th at the Maumee Indoor Theater at 5 p.m. And we will have live music from Wall Music available as well. Next up, we have DeAndre Ware. You're tuning in to The Point, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to The Point. Joining us now, we have DeAndre Ware. DeAndre, thanks for joining the show. Thank you. So, tell us. How long have you been boxing, and at what point in your life did you discover that you wanted to box? I've been boxing since uh, 2010, and uh, it, was, it was kind of just uh, uh, something that just happened. Uh, I played; I was a football player. Things didn't happen well with football. Started boxing, just kind of get uh, get in shape and stuff for football. I, like I said, it didn't happen. Uh, like I wanted it to, so I started boxing because I didn't want to do anything, and uh, well, I didn't want I didn't want to not uh, be active as an athlete. So uh, started boxing, and I started liking it. Started get, started to get good at it. And for those watching that may be unfamiliar, um, could you possibly shed some light on those amazing belts that you have and where you are in terms of rank and your record in your weight class? Um. Well, uh, I uh, I currently I fight at 68, 68, that's super middleweight, uh, and I just fought for these titles. February first, uh, I won the USBO title, uh, the WBC Continental title, and the uh, NABA uh, a WBA title. Okay, and in addition to boxing, it has been brought to my attention that you are a firefighter and a family man. How do you balance all of that? It's kind of hard trying to balance all of them. Uh, 
I mean, I, I try to give my hundred percent all the, all all of them. Uh, but uh, it just it's just the sacrifices that I've taken in uh, my family, my wife, and the kids. They understand what I'm doing on a day to day basis, and uh, at the end of the day, everything that I'm doing is for us to uh, to make sure we have a better future. And if someone wanted to support, how could they go about doing that? And what do you have coming up? Um. At this moment, I don't have anything. I'm waiting on my team, my management, to see what's up next for me. Hopefully, I'll be fighting for a world title within the next two to three fights. Um, but uh, if you guys want to get in touch with me or uh, show support, um, you can find me on Facebook at Dre Ware and uh, Dre underscore uh, Ware 1209 on Instagram. Okay, and that was DeAndre Ware. DeAndre, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And you're tuned into the point, and we'll be right back. We have here in Toledo the Glass City Church of Christ Outreach Step and Praise Team, a phenomenal group of young steppers making a difference. Here with their coach, Marva Jones, we have highlights from the team as they rehearse for some of their upcoming events discussed with Marva today. One of the things that we started with this youth group um, for the steppers is we wanted to provide them an environment where they can glorify God in an artistic way, in a way where they can witness to the community as well as serve him in a spiritual way by stepping with their gift from God. Our step team works with youth um, from the community as well as youth who attend church here at Glass City. Um, the start age is 11 or 12 years old basically if you're turning 12 in the calendar year up until 18. They help out with trying to choreograph the dances and the steps and um, they actually help sometimes pick out songs and then they minister to it and have an outlet, but also teach other people um, what they're doing. And lastly, our acronym STEP. Um, it stands for Standing Tall, Enduring Peer Pressure. And this is one of the things that I use deal with in everyday life. So if you ever want to see a step and minister to any one of you, just call up Glass City Church of Christ. I'm sure our minister, Dr. Robert G. Burt Jr. would be happy to let us come and perform for you and you can reach any one of us coaches and we will get back to you. And if you have any questions, please make sure to log into our Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Raquel Flanagan and until next time, act now, stick to the facts, Get to the point.